my first creation or discovery was really based on a level of remembering That's what it reverse like. engineering something it was the very first time I reverse engineered anything in my life at that time. Um, and it was a really fun moment to do that. Justin Miller is one of the most prolific magicians in the world, and he was the first real artist to help launch Illusionist.com with its founder, Brad Christian. And his creations and discoveries have been collaborated with by almost every top magic company in the world. He's been labeled the Paul Harris of our generation by his peers, and for good reason. Not only did Dean Dill call his coin magic flawless, but Justin has also been nominated for Magician slash Lecturer of the Year two times by the Academy of Magical Arts for his Magic Castle show and his lecture. Justin has created over 4,000 effects for the magic community and has a very successful run with the DVD phase of his life, putting out over 45 instructional DVDs for magicians. Not to mention his magic is performed on every single continent. Justin has consulted for some of the biggest names in magic, TV, and movies. And his style is a mixture between Hunter S. Thompson and the mind of Paul Harris. But the magic he creates is undeniably powerful. So we're pleased to have this one-of-a-kind mind on the Making Magic podcast. And I'd like you all to welcome and enjoy my interview with Justin Miller. Check it out. The bowling ball. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the bowling ball. What's up, Justin? Welcome to the Making Magic podcast. Oh my God, Sean! Thank you so much. This is such an honor. What has it been like? Four, two, three years, something like that. I have two no clue. Years in the making. But, two yeah. years in the making. I'm glad we we're able to get this done, man. Heck yeah! Thank you, man. So here we are, synchronized yeah. in space and time. Boom! There. Not it's like not that. Not even eleven eleven today. Yeah. No, it's not. What is it right now? I don't even know. I have no idea. Seven forty-seven. Close. Oh, seven forty-seven. Seven forty-seven. Front and back. Still counts. There you go. Still counts, young. Still there you counts. go. There you go. So uh, now that we've been properly synchronized, and hopefully this will this will uh, this will work out here. So um, on the show, I like to start off by asking my guests to share <clears> a story <throat> of the very first thing that they ever created. It could be good, it could be bad, and funny stories are always welcome. So I'll let you take it from there. Oh boy, what a great question! I've been interviewed like so many times, dude, and like that's a really great question. So bravo to you on your interview <laughs> skills, just bravo. Good question, creative as hell. Yeah. Um, so I was 11 years old when I first created uh, something, uh, and uh, it was I'd gone to I'd been into magic up, up to that point, like five, five years old, and then at this time, I'd already have like. Um, the red magic books and stuff like that and and but yeah i wasn't really really yeah uh, it, it was a weird process like i can't really even pinpoint when the when i really fully devoted myself to magic it was around probably i i, I can i can pinpoint it from like 10 to 13 is when it just really like kicked in hardcore for me um but i've been into magic since i was five and the very first thing i ever created was when i was very very young um i was probably about I think I was about nine or eight or nine or something. And uh, I went to the, a, a, a magic um, meeting at the IBM international brotherhood of magicians. We all know what that is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a specific magic club for magicians. The main one that with Sam as well. And uh, it was ring seven in Columbus, Ohio. I remember. And I walked in and there was this uh, a handlebar mustache guy. And he, he just a, he was just a character, just an incredible man, sandy blonde hair, and just it was just a character. He had a pea coat on. It was just it was amazing. And, and, and by the way, his, his name was George Kirkendall. George Kirkendall, and George was a an, uh, one of the major 
uh, pioneers of magic. And uh, the before, oh, let's put it this way: before there was Jamie Schoolcraft, before there was all these other people, uh, and Cooper, Roy Cooper, and all these guys, um, there was only one person that was Kirkendall, where you got shells and these kind of things from, and reels. Um, and Kirkendall was an incredible magician, an incredible creator himself, and inventor. And um, and he shows me, he takes a handkerchief, puts it in his blah blah blah, blah and it vanishes. Oh, like, what's going on? What you know? It's like that next level of magic. There's so many journeys, a uh, uh, little uh, flagships and magic. Like you know, you you've reached another one, mm -hmm. and that was another one. You're like, oh, what is this new level you're at? And um, I ended up uh, going home and basically just trying to deconstruct how he did it. Like you know, just logically, like how could you? How would you be able to do this? And I ended up creating a pulley system uh, out of nowhere. And I, and I didn't even know what a pulley system was at that time. <laughs> nice. And, yeah. I cut, I cut, I cut a toilet paper tube um, in half and then I put a, uh, a paper clip and then I, I, I connected those together and it was like a, it was like a pail, like mm -hmm. you carried a pail. And then I took rubber bands and I tied them together. So it created a stretchy pulley system. And then um, you could put something inside of it. And if you let go of it in your jacket or something, which I wore, I was a kid, I was a strange kid. I was a strange a kid. Big jacket, right? I wore David Copperfield jackets. I wore, I had, I'm so happy my hair is getting back to where it used to be. You gotta understand something from the, the picture. Obviously, it's totally different now. Um, I used to have long hair and I missed it and I wanted to grow it back. Dude, I've always been this very uh I don't know. Even at that young age, I just knew I was going to be something or someone. I just, it was one of those feelings. I, You know what I mean? I think you talk to anybody who's ever made any kind of dent in the world in any form or fashion, You and they always have kind of a thread in the story. I felt at one point that I was supposed to or was going to make or whatever, the insert whatever. Sure. Uh, everybody has that 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 thread somewhere. It's just sure. it, when you're a kid, Andy Kaufman used to you know you know uh, uh, look at the wall and perform to the wall as if it was an audience, right? I mean, I used to perform. I used to I used to uh, I used to do uh, guitars, not, not guitar solos, but I used to do um, drum solos to the Beach Boys with my cardboard boxes I'd set up in my room and I, and I had, you know what I mean? And it was, it was amazing. Um, th th I think there's just that, that level. And I was just one of those kids, man. And, uh, but I looked a dorky, very dorky. So I used to wear those jackets for sure. Anyways, I practiced, practiced, practiced. You couldn't see anything. It looked great. I went to, I went to the, the next uh, monthly meeting and uh, I went up to the old man and uh, and I showed him what I showed him. <clears throat> and he goes, ah, oh, kid, you got one of the, uh, you see, you got one of these, uh, the, these right here. And he slaps my back and he pulls out a thumb tip. <laughs> and I go, what, what is that? <laughs> he goes, and he looked for my, he, it, was, it was really funny because at that time I had my hands out like this. Ah, I see. Because that's, because I remember that's what he did. You right. understand what I'm saying? Right. I didn't have any. I didn't have a thumb tip on, right. but I remember that's what he did. I was, and that's another thing. My first creation or discovery was really based on a level of remembering what it reverse like. engineering something. It was the very first time I reverse engineered anything in my life at that time, um, and it was a really fun moment to do that. And so I had created this whole pulley system that was big, and it was you had to hold it. And, and he's like, he got one of these thumbs, do you? And I'm, I grabbed him. Like, that's how you did that? He goes, wait, that's not how you did yours. And he started grabbing my thumbs. I go, no. He goes, what? Did, what, what? And I and I showed him what I made. And he goes, come on in, kid. Let me introduce you to the rest of the guys. Nice, nice. Done. Nice. Game over. And I was like, what? Yeah. Nice. That's a, yeah. that's really different way to be introduced into that. Usually, it's just like watch all the videos, read all the books, and then start yeah. from something that's already been done. But then you're just like, I like how that effect looks. So let me just figure out something to get it done on my own. Yeah, and I and it's funny. I, I realized at that very moment that it that it was a very secret society. That's why I hold it so secret to myself and sacred because he didn't let me in. To sh he he just met me at the front. And he didn't go and he didn't go, oh, you know, I'm going to make the, the silk vanish himself. Then go, okay, let me introduce the rest of these people. No, 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 no. There was another secret sect of these magicians, apparently. And he, and he appreciated 
that I that I had done what I had done, you know, sure. him being himself a creator and discoverer of magic uh, and a being at, at 45, 50 years old, or however old he was at the time. Uh, it was and it was, it was one of those. Another thing it was my my new peers accept me and they are not my age. That's some shit. I know 100% how that feels. I was the one <clears throat> of the youngest, if not the younger members of a magic club back when I was 12. I wasn't Heck, yeah. five. You said you were five when you did that? I was five years old when I first got into magic. My dad showed me a card trick. The very first time I ever saw magic my entire life, when I was five years old. But when you made the, the thing with the rubber bands, you I were was about five. nine years old, nine okay. or eight. Yeah. Okay. Nine or eight. And what that's when I got introduced to the IBM. Okay. Okay. Magic's been magic has been part of my life from the very beginning, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't delve into it when I was two or when I was two, when I was uh, when I was like, you know, I tried all these other things and now I'm 15. Like, oh, I'll pick up magic. No, yeah. no, 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 no. No, magic has been the core of my being from age five years old. Amazing. Yeah, my very first thought of when it came to magic, when my dad showed me a card trick. Uh, he did he did the the four piles and then count and then the aces were on top of the piles. I was like, what is going on? It's so crazy. Five years old, very first trick. Um and uh that and the four robbers, those are the first two tricks I ever saw ever. I that's the first magic I ever saw in my entire life. Huh. Is those those effects. Um, which is funny because I have so many versions of those uh, right now, actually, in yeah. my in my repertoire. And anyways, so um yeah, I never remember. I remember, God, I've, I've I've said this so many times, but I remember vividly the voice I heard inside me and the feeling when I was five and I saw what I saw. I remember it said every single person in the world needs to experience this and feel this for themselves. I was five. It was very first thought that kind of brought me into a level of like, oh, you're you you you're being used for something there's a call mm. somewhere this is a calling this is a calling now i didn't know what that would be like until it was teased out over my life obviously you know what i mean mm -hmm. but uh but it was crazy man it was just so yeah magic's always been uh a part of my my being everything beautiful beautiful so clearly you've been in in the game for a while uh, it's been a few big years part of your life few so, years yeah <laughs> just two years so, few, you know, a few years, few oh, years. Oh, a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a few. Yeah. <laughs> so, so knowing what you know now, Justin, being yeah. in it for as long as you have, is there anything, any advice that you would give your younger self now to avoid making the mistakes that you made Great earlier question. on? Great question. No, because it would, it, would, it would change. I wouldn't be who I am today. No. No, 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 no. I want that person to go through everything it, it, it went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good answer. It has to. It has to. Because then it's not, the, because then even the, the even it, I could never answer that question in a, in a righteous way, if you think about it, because the, everything would be different. The morals and understanding with that person's perception would be different and there'd mm -hmm. be no. And so who am I now to make an assumption on on another part of me that has not yet fully developed you know what i mean yes. yeah yeah i'm glad you sorry i'd be like sorry kid enjoy the ride but it's a crazy one <laughs> pretty much that's yeah i you know what i would say i would i would be i'd give i'd give that person i'd give that kid um i just give that kid some encouragement like hey man it's not always going to be like it's always been you're you're, you're i just you're going to get through it I promise you, you're going to get through it. You're going to want to give up so many times just with life stuff, just in general. Right. I just, I would, that's what I would do. I would encourage my younger self to just, you got to just believe that there is maybe another chance that tomorrow is going to be a different outcome and you got to hold on to that somehow. That's what I would tell them. Yeah. That right there is a really, I think that's might be my opening quote for this interview. That's, that's nice to, Right, because people always think that tomorrow is going to be exactly the same as today. You're going to get the same mm. outcome. There's people mm. have expectations, mm. these mm. fantasy mm. expectations that that they want to be met. Yeah. Or if something terrible happens to them, they go, "Well, that's going to be the same thing tomorrow." Well, not necessarily. 
Yeah, exactly. Not and that's the and when suicide prevention, uh, they 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 teach you the very first thing is that if you can get if those if you can get the the person in line to believe that from tr- that that tomorrow will be a different day, that at least just wait till tomorrow and see if it's not different. Um, that's one of the things they're taught because it's very true. It's very true. Ask anybody who's suicidal who has been suicidal. And if they just wait that 24 hours there, dude, the world, the universe can change in 24 hours, man. It can change in one second. It can change in one second. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's just uh, how do you get people to experience that, though, if they don't already have a, uh, a foundation of how to believe maybe something like that's possible? I was very fortunate. Even when I look up when I was a pastor and, and, and theology and stuff, um, that helped me really see though life differently as, as I left that though, as it left me, you know? Mm. Um, but I was still able to hold on to the idea that, uh, you know, and, and by the way, even if it doesn't change, write it, write it, man, because that seems to be the moment that you're there for. So write it, so, you know, f- fall into life. Don't move. Don't, don't go. Don't uh, move away from it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's hard though. That's hard for a lot of people because then they have to kind of figure out who they are, you know? It's yeah. super deep self discovery stuff that's up to each person to yeah. figure out on their own time. Yeah, hopefully they do. Yeah. It's an it's an incredible journey though, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. Well let's um let's let's switch gears and actually talk about something I always ask all of my guests because they're always creative and you clearly fit the bill is there what what would be your favorite thing that you've created in the past that you can share with us I'm so weird I hate it's and this is something I've I've talked about but I cannot stand there's certain words in our in our in our society I just I try not to use anymore the word favorite the word mm-hmm. love the word friend um, they, okay. they, they just, Anything they, there's, positive. <laughs> there's just no way to go with all of it because it's not, it, it's just, it's, ugh. I, you know what, every single creation of mine and has slash discovery. And I really want to point that out to people. I don't believe I create everything. I, I think we discover, I think part of it's discovering. There's not, we don't just sit down and go, well, okay, I'm going to make this now, and here's how it's going to happen. And do, 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 do. oh, it worked out perfectly. That's it's just it's not the way it works at all. Um, be in a place where that might be able to happen, you know, headspace and that kind of thing. But um, it's uh, so I, I, they're all my babies. Yeah, they're all special to me somehow, some way. Um, I can't define a favorite. I can I can tell you that they're always my favorite when I'm working on them. Sure, in the moment. Okay. In the moment, they are the best thing in the world. As you would treat your children. And you would, and if you have multiple children, you understand you'd have to treat each child differently. You can't treat them the same. They just you just can't. They have different personalities, different quirks, different everything. But just because they come from the same, uh, you know, uh, bloodline doesn't mean that they're the exact same people. Of course they're not. So I look right, at my right. effects the same way. I look at the, my creation slash discoveries the same way. Yeah, that, that's an interesting, that it's kind of, you would enjoy the interview that I did with uh, Marty Gilbert because he had. Yeah, I was uh, getting ready to watch that actually. Uh, it's funny. I was getting ready to watch it. Perfect. Yeah, he's got a similar kind of way of thinking. Like when I talked about creativity, he actually said he hates the word creativity because he still isn't convinced. No. Nobody, can technically create something from nothing with, with no, without any uh, help, whether it be subconscious, something they saw in the past or something. A pure else. thought. In other words, a pure thought of consciousness that's not connected to anything other than the idea of itself becoming something. Now, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you and I both know we've sat down and, and if you try to focus onto something before it has appeared to you right mm-hmm. the idea is there it's it's a concept still but yep. it cannot it just it doesn't have a doorway yet it just doesn't until something magical happens who 
freaking knows what it is. I mean, that's the crazy part. You know, if aliens came down right now and said, okay, you guys are interesting. You have personalities and like, are they, you must have things are turning cranks. Let me open up your brain. And they'd see there's nothing. It's just a blob of, of tissue. Like there's no man at the lever, right? It's crazy. So where does it come from? Who knows? We don't know. We have no clue. Um, but uh, I, I, I truly think that uh, each one of my uh, creations are kind of my quote unquote best ones at the time. I oh. give as much uh, adoration to each creation at any level when it when it's being produced and created. Okay, so so my yeah. next question then would be kind of similar, but I'll I'll change it. So what? Not we, we omitting the word favorite. What is what mm -hmm. simply is your most recent creation? Recently? Oh, there we go. That's cool. Yeah, um, the cloak too. So in. Um, in 2007, myself and Danny Garcia put out a, 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 a new way to uh, would revolutionize how people do thread magic, right? Elastic, elastic thread magic. Mm -hmm. And up to that point, it was just loops and stuff. And, uh, and so we created this really cool system. And it, was, it, was, it went bananas, right, in the magic world, especially in the mentalism world. And I wanted to take it and turn it into something different where now you could do all the same effects, but it doesn't use thread at all. That's fantastic. And so, yeah, so it's a rising card. It's a, it's, you can, you can make cards appear on the outside of the box. Like they, they shoot out like a super speed. Um, and then it's also a, um, it's, it's, it does everything that you want it to do that the cloak did. And then, then some, yeah, yeah. I was very happy with it. I, it was just something I've always wanted. It's been like 15 years in the making, so like that. Just kind of on the back burner, slowly chipping away at it, like, oh, this would be good. Or absolutely, man. Yeah. The, you know, I, I a lot of my stuff, man. A lot of my ideas come out of uh, just that that REM sleep of coming up to the universe when you're first waking up, mm -hmm. like right there, and it's like all of a sudden, and it's not when you're up, up. It's right when you're like you're uh, you're still right. Yeah. your eyes open and right when my eyes open i literally think of an effect or 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 a method or think or something i've been thinking on or whatever whatever that is that part of my life is like a, a special sacred moment where my brain immediately goes yeah but on something that i haven't been working on sometimes for like you know a week or so it's really really amazingly weird yeah yeah mm. Yeah. So I think the lesson here for people is to to have more uh, sleep with me. Sleep with Justin <laughs> for starters. He's he's taking sleep right next to me. We'll have a sacred night. <laughs> what I was what I was gonna try yeah. to say was um, pay, uh, have more like internal awareness. Like people oftentimes yeah. like just uh, breeze right past uh, like really subtle cues and like subtle things that your body <clears> might be <throat> trying to tell you. And yeah. And it's nice because when you're in that state of just waking up or maybe just before bed, uh, with me, it's like just before bed, my mind just goes crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because you don't have to think about all of the other real life stuff you're doing during the day. And then you're just kind of sitting there by yourself and you're like, yeah. oh, what about this? No, it's a car it's a carnival in my head 24 <laughs> seven. Um, but at nighttime, I, I'm hoping like you're like, ah, shut up, you know, <laughs> shut down. And it's like, no, we got 17 more ideas for this one freaking idea here. <laughs> like, ah, all right. And then you're, you're here's what's interesting. You're compelled to get up. How, how many times does this happen to you? Right. You either have a dream of something that you've, that you blah, 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 right. Or you just waking up and you're compelled no matter what time it is. You have to get up, turn that light on, turn the camera on and work it out. And that joy though, that, oh man, it's better than sex. It really is. It, 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 I'm 47. I'm telling you, man, I've done my, I've done some wonderful things, sexual stuff, but it, this is, this is just sacred. So sacred because you're bringing something out of, out of, out of a thought. And you're making it real with physical objects. It's pretty amazing. It's just, ah, the fact that we can do this as humans, it's, it's nuts. It's, it's a lot like <clears throat> 3D design and 3D printing. Yeah, absolutely. 
that yeah. is what what I find so magical about that technology and why I just am so passionate about it because you literally start here then you make this 3D digital thing and then all of yeah. a sudden to see that thing come up off the machine <clears throat> I, sometimes I'm like almost in tears because it's like oh I I'd be in tears every, if I if I had a 3D printer dude, I'd be in tears every single time I created something like that <laughs> I I literally weep uh, uh like over my creation so many times um like i'm just like whoa because you know when you have something special you just yeah. know it you don't you just like something will happen you're like whoa this really can this happen whoa i happen to get whoa what okay and there's that great moment that because you've done all the hard work yeah of of of, of oh my god how many times how many let me ask you a question let me ask you a question how how far do you go into something until you finally go okay i'm done giving this energy anymore this is um i'm not even putting this on the back burner anymore I, this is the moment it dies how far do i go before i get to that point no no when, when you like yeah how like like um like how far are you into whatever you're doing that you go okay it's over i'm pulling the plug uh it's usually i get pretty deep into it yeah yeah yeah. that's the part that's the sad part that's the hard part right yeah i get like not knee deep <clears throat> like this deep yeah <laughs> no nope, like, I'm, I'm with you how I'm much time you, have i spent on this how much money you're, have i spent you're on this pissed. You're, yeah you're just yelling at yourself and you're like are you oh how much time and energy and brain thought waves and everything mm -hmm. uh and you just have to look at it and go just have to let it go I can't, I can't because you're, you're just, because now what you're doing, this is what I think. I think what you're doing now is that you're not having the, the, <clears throat> the purest and, and best thoughts towards that project anymore. Yeah. Once yeah. you've now seen the, the, the death throes of that project, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so it's hard to resurrect that mentally and be as excited as you were about it when you were first trying to work it out. Right. Very good point. Yeah, when you're first trying to work it out, it's this big novelty, and then after you have all these upsets, it's like, ah, eh, it's like this love-hate weird thing. You just yeah. gotta break away and move on. Or and then the cool thing about that is, uh, if you allow yourself to just let go, you could be working on something else a couple of years in the future, and then you go, oh wait a minute, that's kind of like the da da da, -da and then one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. that's a weird thing. It's like, okay, I'm gonna let it off its respirator now. You know, rest in peace. And then you find out, you know, Jason versus Freddie. You're like, ah, I'm still here. And you're like, ah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, there's a lot of different things, like ideas. I had to, I had to figure out how to um, make water drip from a card one time uh, that I turned into a trick called Snow Days. Because I wanted them at the end to have a snowman. And then I wanted them to light a, a lighter and you bring it over and then water just drips onto their hand. <clears throat> And then you show the back of the card and it's melted snowman with their signed card. Nice. And it's, it took me, oh my God, dude. It took me forever to try to find what I was really looking for. And then one day I went into a, a Kia, no, not a Kia, a Pier 1. And uh, I saw um, the fake fruit and I saw the grape. And I was like, wait a second, that is, that'll hold water, won't it? If you squeeze one time and let go and you can throw it up in the air it's not going to have the water bounce out. I'm like, whoa. <clears throat> so that's what I used. And it was perfect. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's like you know, making the weirdest of connections from just outer space. And then you just there and you go, wait a minute, that can be used for that. And you. Would yeah, because my brain kept going. My, here's how my brain works to this level. It goes, let's figure this out. All right, cool. Do I have to do it now? No, but we're going to we're going to keep it there. All right, cool. And then I'll work on 17 other ideas and items or whatever I'm working on. And mm -hmm. then somehow that object, it's like that synchronicity thing, right? The object met me in the universe. I met the yeah. object in the universe. And the object in me talked immediately and goes, this is what you, you've been waiting for this. Me, here, here, here. And uh, you're like, whoa, that's so crazy. I wish, you know, it's like Carl Jung said, that, like, this is, this should, this is, he thinks it's a natural phenomenon to have all these synchronicities and all these all these connections, uh, the way that, uh, but not everybody does though. And that's, what's really strange. Uh, it's weird. Which, which brings me to the, it's a perfect segue to my next question, which would be, 
you know, if you have to let things go for whatever reason, do, what would be in your mind like your biggest DIY fail of all time? Like something that you were working on that maybe just blew up in your face and it just had to be trashed? Because I've had a lot of funny random stories, people <coughs> telling about all sorts of accidents, yeah. things getting set on fire, things exploding, things, you know. So I, I'd be willing to bet that you've had some just weird, crazy. <clears throat> yeah, I have. Um, that you're okay sharing without. I was a kid. Well, hold on. I'm trying to think. Sure. Without exposing any. I've got a few of them. Um, I just try, I'm trying to figure out which which genre, which part of my life I want to pull it from. Sure. Um. So I, wait. So the, so the, the question is something I created slash discovered that I ended up it didn't work out. It just failed. A DIY fail, and when I mean that, like by by building something or cutting something or gluing something or in the process of making, and it just didn't work out. And I said, just threw it away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Took it right, right off the respirator, and kicked it out the window. No, done. Yeah, not game over. I'm not get away from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this and this is what delayed uh, this release too. It's funny. Okay. So I put out, um, I, 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 uh, I put out something called uh, Dean Dill's Deluxe Coin Cascade. This was based on uh, Dean's uh, Coin Cascade effect, which is so beautiful. And uh, I got permission from Denise's wife and I went all that route and everything. And it was so, I, th this is actually the, the prop and everything. And mm. Here's the gimmick and stuff, whatever. So anyways, um, I had gotten these, uh, I, I needed, I needed them to fit. I needed these coins, all of these coins to fit into this gimmick. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I initially got some replicas that were they were just I, I i tried them like myself and they were fine and then i got them and there were like 200 coins right that was sent to me and none of them fit not one coin fit in any of the tubes and i had already had like 100 tubes by and i i had like a, a thousand coins can you go coming. like this to show the camera if you're not exposing anything crazy um yeah yeah there you go so this this tube here just fitting coins in a tube okay just fitting coins in a tube and none of them fit and i almost lost it <laughs> i was like are you kidding me and I'm, and I didn't, and they had, I, I don't know what had happened. They had, whether they sent the wrong ones or whatever. And uh, so I just had to throw all those coins away. Cause I'm like, cause in my head, I'm like, you can create something out of this. I'm like, fuck, no, I'm not doing that. I'm throwing them away. And that's the other thing I have to be careful of because if I don't throw things away, my brain will just like, Hey, let's try to get something done with this. I'm like, Oh, no, stop. <laughs> yeah, just leave it alone. Leave it. Yeah, yeah, leave it alone. So yeah, I had to throw all of them away. I had to throw like a thousand coins away. Were they sold? Yeah. Then I had, and I had to reorder. So I lost all that money. Um, yeah. Were, were yeah. they silver coins? They were. Um, the first ones were. Um, no, they were. I'll tell you what they were. They were these. It was these sons of bitches. So these are like like worn coins, right? Mm -hmm. And they were bigger. They're bigger in diameter, apparently, than these are. Just a hair. Just a hair, dude. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And it's one of those things I had to wait overseas and get. Like, it took Seoul forever to get and that kind of thing. And I already put all this money into this project. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay. And then here's another one. Here's another one. Uh, one day I, when I was a kid, I was working on a trick. And I mean a kid, I was probably like 12 or 13 years old. <clears throat> I was working on a trick and you had to cut and I had to figure out how to cut the bill somehow, whatever. And I was using $100 bills. Okay. And for some reason, I just didn't think I was using real $100 bills. And I ended up just <laughs> cutting can... the shit out of one bill until it was nothing. And I looked down, I'm like, did you just cut up a $100 bill? What are you doing? 
and I couldn't put it back together. It was in shreds, dude. It was like it went through a paper shredder. It was like every yeah, exactly, shredder. exactly. Yeah. Because the trick you had to like I had to figure this out, and it was like, and I thought I just thought I was using fake money for some reason at that time. I don't know why. <laughs> and I was just looked down like you were just a moron. I was like nine years old or some ten. I don't know what I was. I don't know. Yeah. That was the hundred dollar lesson. It really was hundred dollar lesson. I remember looking in the the garbage can, like and passing it every time I'd pass it. I'm like, you just you're, ugh, what's wrong with you? It's literally a hundred bucks in the garbage. Literally. Yeah, yeah, literally. And th there was no taking it back to the bank. Right. At that time, this is the eighties. It was not like that. You couldn't do that. What? <laughs> right. Here, this is this was money one time. Yeah, you this is one. This is one of those. I want one of those now. No, you couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. I never told anybody that either. Just, just, <laughs> Ever. Like the, just like the old joke, you know, you, you tell you tell your take this to your bank. You tell them that you saw so and so, and then they'll tell you what to do with it. Oh, exactly. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah. That, yeah. That's what would have happened. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. So yeah, like after the coins didn't fit and you had to throw all those coins out and then you cut up the $100 bill and then just that went in the trash, big fail. Yeah. But of course we all learn from these failures and sometimes uh, failures lead into beautiful accidents. And so my sure, next question sure. was going to be like, is there anything that you've ever just <laughs> created by accident? You thought it was going to be a big flop and you were just frustrated and then boom, it was this big breakthrough all from an accident. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can okay. I show it to you? Sure. I'll share. show it to you. I will show it to you. So this uh, this didn't just uh, turn into a huge thing for me. It changed my life, but it saved oh. my life. It, it saved my life, too, actually. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, all right. Let's see here. There we go. Beautiful. Cool. So I uh, know if you were here, I'd have you pick a card or something, right? Uh-huh. But you're not here, obviously. We'll just use the top card, right? The Ace of Hearts. Okay. So remember the Ace of Hearts. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put it somewhere in the center of the pack, right about there. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Right about there. It's cool. Perfect. Um, now here's the secret move. That's all it takes. Makes the card jump to the top of the deck again. There we go. I know what you're thinking. There's two. Like there's more Ace of Hearts. I get, yeah, it's got to it. be all Aces. I do me a favor. Um, do me a favor. Uh, just name a number. We'll we'll put that on there. Six. Six. Perfect. Random number. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. And we'll we'll put another number just for the heck of it. Four. Or a word. Let's do a word. Make it okay. Uh, let's do uh, supercalifragilistic XBL. No, let's do uh, All right. Califragilis <laughs> XBL. Doshus. Okay. Go. Okay. <laughs> you came through. Ah. Right. <laughs> There's no way anybody could copy this card. Why would they want to? Nope crazy so you know it's the only card but again i'll put it in the middle of the deck roughly right about there mm -hmm. and believe it or not there's the secret move and it really does jump to the top of the deck. beautiful every time every time nice. i did forget something though i did forget something i do apologize do you know what i forgot no i forgot to take the cards out of the card box huh yeah sorry Look about that. that wow it's, uh, this was my this is what brought me um after my divorce and everything, it was it was a really really hold on there we go. Um, so yeah, the, this this effect that you just saw um, changed my life, uh, brought me into another level of life, and and saved my my life as well. I was just coming out of a divorce, and it was a horrible divorce, and it was just messy, and it was bad, it was bad, it was bad, and I was just I didn't have anything, I didn't have any money, I didn't have I had nothing, and um, and I was sitting there one day. And that's hard to do too, dealing with personal stuff and then still trying to be this create this creative thing still happening. Oh, yeah. It takes up all very, your mental bandwidth. Woo, boy, oh boy, oh boy. That's a rough, that's a rough one. Um, and I was I was sitting there, and this was probably two years into the divorce at this time. And I was just like I'd gotten through the first year. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Didn't create anything. Didn't, wasn't, I had no presence online anymore. Like it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, like I disappeared. I just disappeared. And then I was very fortunate uh, in my life before that time. I was able to work with Paul Harris on a project. So I got to know Paul through a different project. And then years later, 
um, I'm sitting there and I was working on something else completely, an idea. I was trying to try something else with a, with a box. So I wanted to make the card box jump and appear around the cards, right? Just, but I wanted to be able to show the cards. You could, you could, you could run your thumb down the cards and very, very openly, you know what I mean? And, um, and when nothing was working, nothing was working at all. And I, and I started, uh, and I was working on a different trick, actually. That's the funny part. I was working on a totally different effect with this, with what I was trying to do with this card box. Mm -hmm. And it just simply wasn't working at all. And I set it and I set whatever I had created at that time, I put it down and I went to bed and I woke up and I looked, and when I woke up, I looked at it and I like, I was like, wait a second, that just looks like a deck of cards sitting on the table right now, like an open deck of cards. Is that the same? Is that the box card right there? Is that the one I have? And I went over to look. I'm like, whoa, wait a second. That's crazy. That's the thing. And then I started looking at it and I was like, okay, now I can do this. And then it started just happening. And then the, the, the goal was though, like, how do I, you know, I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be organic, right? I didn't want it to be a mechanical gimmick or anything like that. I wanted it somehow to be organic. That's why I just wanted to use the card box and the cards. And then uh, I hit some gold on it and I sent it to Paul Harris. I remember exactly where I was. I didn't have two pennies to my name at this time. I didn't have a computer, I, let alone didn't have any of this stuff. I mean, it just, I didn't have any of it. Mm. And I sent it to him and he said, uh, he said, uh, okay, what? <laughs> he goes, that's beautiful. I said, There's, is, is it organic? Is it? Oh, yeah. He goes, okay, show me the method. Show him the method. And he, he sent me the contract over within like an hour. And, uh, and that was it. That got me back into the, uh, into the community again and everything. And, Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Which was my very first Paul Harris, uh, release. Yeah. Freedom pack. Freedom pack. Yeah. Freedom pack. I do remember that. Yeah. My baby. I had like a, a I had a mohawk. I had a flow hawk in this one. <laughs> flow hawk. And, and do you have a bottle of uh, Justin tears that we'll be selling afterwards for all the creations you've cried over and you've collected those tears? <laughs> no, I keep those for myself. Oh, okay. It, yeah. You've got so many tears, it's like a lava lamp. It's just Absolutely. Like yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Every <laughs> Each tear has a sound. It, like it's just... <laughs> something like that, yes. Yeah, that's great. It's like that's a... Funny. It's bubble lamp of inspiration those are all my tears from all my this is, yeah like oh what a nice bubble lamp no no, no that's 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 the failure <laughs> failing just failures thanks yep. thanks for pointing out my failures my bright failures in the room <laughs> <laughs> gotta use it for something right that's great yeah exactly so, I'm, 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 I'm happy to see justice bringing out his torture lamp tonight <laughs> exactly exactly so i'm always thinking i'm always thinking. yeah that's funny it's it's all good uh what if so th i mean that that right there was an amazing story what what about um yeah. is there anything that it that insp uh inspired you well no you already explained how you got creative it was just like this initial spark from seeing this effect and then you just mm -hmm. realized hmm, i could reverse engineer stuff so yeah yeah would would you say that that man that you mentioned in the very beginning was the was the person that inspired you to continue <clears throat> creating, or was there any specific person or people that inspired you to just keep rolling with the whole creativity thing? It's really weird, dude. Like, I um for like the first the first like 20 of my releases, like whether it be like through illusionist or Cosmo magic or, or, um, Murphy's or whatever, whatever I did in the very beginning, mm -hmm. they weren't very artsy craftsy. They, they had some sense of it, but there was more, it, it was, I don't know. It was very strange lot, because at the time you were doing, uh, you were doing multiple effect DVDs at that time, you know, that really doesn't exist anymore. If you think about it, we don't have that anymore. Yeah. Um, but at the time, that's what it was. And so uh, when I when I went with all, all these big companies, my very first DVDs were Strolling Hands 1 and 2. And that was like 05, 06, something like that. Were you looking like Neo from The Matrix? Not yet. I, I'd see, that's the thing. You see, if you look back, see, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it was, Illusionist is the one that made me look like Neo. Okay. 
Cosmo made me, it, it was the restaurant uh, strolling magician feel where I had my three piece suit on and I had, right. Um, then Brad just goes, let's mess with this kid's image as much as possible. <laughs> All over the place. Thanks, yeah. Brad. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 yeah. It was fun. I enjoyed the heck of it. Yeah, the Neo thing was crazy. We 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 played that up to like uh, nth degree for Army of 52. Um, but uh, the, uh, the people that you look yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. The creators. That the creators uh yeah i think that definitely i think george kirkendall for sure a uh, set a fire in me what's uh, for, you know uh to keep creating and keep keep discovering at that time uh all of my mentors at the time jamie kurtz tim moore um all those guys uh d inspired me and and continue to, you know keep reading keep keep delving into the history of magic and um uh, yeah, I think so for sure. And, and you know, at every part of the level of my uh, new journey of magic, whenever it is, or wherever it is, there's always another person that's always like, "On, hey man, like, I really love what you're doing now," you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's cool. Like, it's neat to hear that because I always want to hear that at least uh, that people are appreciating what what I put into it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Would you are there any resources that you would recommend? Because this this goes out to the public as well. This isn't just for magicians yeah. only. Um, mm. And clear, you're, clearly, you're a, you're a, okay. So I'll stop using the word creative. You you have a great imagination, and you're very good at pulling from inspiration from the ether and your life experience. And and you know what that's what you know. What Sankey said something like that to me. He said, "I love your ability to dream." Yeah, I, I literally have that on my website right now. Sankey's quote. It was really cool of him to say that. I'm like, I, it blew me away. I'm like, whoa, that's a really cool way of saying I like your stuff. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. because I mean, yeah. all of this starts as like you said, your REM sleep, all this starts as like some mm -hmm. dream seed of idea like, oh, wouldn't that be cool if or I, I was I was just waking up and I just the, 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 Oh, yeah, let's do I that. like to look at things as they're not and, and imagine they are. That's that's literally what I do. I look at things as they're not yet and imagine that they are. And then my brain somehow can just go, okay, let's figure it out now. I don't know why. I don't know how. Yeah, it's crazy. So, so it, for, for those people, <clears throat> it doesn't come naturally. And I know there's this whole debate about, well, some people are just a natural at it, but some people maybe just haven't discovered it or you know their underlying mm. potential. For, for something yeah because there's no real answer right it's that's yeah. the part like we have to like try to figure out why it happens where it comes from because and and keep asking questions and keep trying to delve into it because there's really no clear concise answer that just fits into one container yeah. it's like it's crazy yeah. and, and even though there's no concise answer would, would there mm. be any kind of like universal advice that you could give to someone to mm. to mm. help get their creative mm. juices flowing in great what question they are doing yeah. in their life and business yeah great question i mean as far as when it comes to personal life i think the most important thing is to find time for you as much as possible you know um <clears throat> life is hectic and whatever you're doing you know st you know one of the things you can do is literally wherever you are in the world you can close your eyes at that very spot close your eyes for 10 seconds push your feet onto the ground as if on your tippy toes, breathe in, breathe out, let it go. As you let it go, slowly descend back to the ground off your tippy toes, open your eyes and continue to go. It's a huge amount of stress that you'll take off your life. If people did that like 10 times a day, they'd have so much less stress. Um, but I think also find things that you really dig, man, like find, like find music you really dig and delving into it, whatever it is you dig and whatever it is you adore, delve hardcore into it as hard as possible just do it find everything you ad adore about it and you know whatever it might be walking uh meditation but you have to you have to just go 100 into it because that has to be your personal sacred uh, place right um and that will help you also start to open up doors of uh creativity of something in the brain that just starts clicking in when you start listening to things you like, when there's nobody else going, I don't like that station. I like, but you just doing your thing. You're really, you're getting in tune with like who you are. You're finding out what you like music wise, what you like movie wise, 
Uh, too many people have been programmed to believe that they like the things because they like the things, but it's only because their friends or their people yes. like the things. It's that, that is something that's rarely talked about. And most people probably don't even know that that's going on. They don't. They don't at all. They don't at all. They don't know. That even alone think, is I mean, mind blowing. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy stuff. It's crazy stuff. And so when you give yourself permission to do the opposite, um, you're, you're literally delving into a brand new you that you didn't know existed and, and just listen to that voice. I think also listening to the voice, we all have this voice inside of us. Uh, and I'm not talking about the narrating voice because not everybody has a narrating voice. I, by the way, were you freaked out when you found out that people didn't have a narrating voice in their head? Do you, you know, I've never really asked myself that question. Wait, do you? Do you have do you have a voice in your head that narrates and that that all, all the time? Yeah, yeah. Do you know there's people that don't? No. How in the hell do they live life? It, That's so it, crazy to it me. Must yeah, be but so they're boring. Yeah, it must. Well, it it's like like a cheeseburger again, I guess. Like what? Like there's no there's no like pushback. <laughs> like there's <laughs> like. Yeah, I hear yeah. the voice two times every second. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's it's, it's there, uh, and so but now but because you're doing your thing, whatever it is, meditating, running, whatever it is, I, I, I'd stay away from like, I'd stay away from uh, 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 um, events that make you uh, you have to think, you have to think about concepts or plots or things like that. In other words, I'd stay away from reading books. I'd stay away from um, re reading anything. You, you're trying desperately to get to a place of pure, uh, just you, just you, without mm -hmm. any inter uh, interference between um, the, the internet or, or reading or thoughts from other people or ideas. So be careful of the people you hang around at that time. You know what I mean? Like just little, th little things that turn into big things. Um, also, uh, you know, exercise and diet works for a lot of people. I don't exercise as much as I should, but I do exercise uh, as much as I remember to. It's the best I can do. Uh, and um, showers, man, either, either, either long showers. I find those just wonderfully, um, wonderfully uh, soothing. Yeah. And I can, and I can really wrestle with my thoughts at that time too. So I call the shower, uh, the, the, uh, a, a time machine. It's the TARDIS to me, if you think about it, because this is something I came up with a long time ago. So you're always in three different states of, of consciousness and being when you're in a shower, you're in the future, you're in the present, you're in the past. So you're in the uh, present because or you're in the past because right when you get in the shower, your brain starts thinking, what did I do yesterday? You start thinking about all the things you did or didn't do or the person you saw or all these past things start happening. You even start going into uh, if you stay in the shower long enough, if you start going into childhood past, things just start happening like in your brain. So you're there. Then you're all in the present. You're washing yourself. You're taking care of yourself. You're doing your thing. And then you're in the future. You're thinking about what to do for the for that day. You're looking at your schedule in your mind. You're looking at all these things. You're traveling through time in a shower. Huh. If people stop that, if people stop to see that, they would then understand that there can be a connection between all those different uh, realities that have one has not existed, one is happening now, and the other one has existed already. And when you when you allow yourself to be in those three states of time at the exact same time, you start to take on a different form of seeing the world. Uh, you start seeing it totally differently. Um, so yeah, I call the shower my TARDIS. Uh, it's a sacred place for sure. Yeah. Uh, also, um, you know, uh, there's just so much. There's you know, do the research obviously, and I'm not yeah. telling you to do drugs or anything, folks. Jesus Christ. But what I'm telling you is, there's beneficial research and there's benefits from cannabis uh, and 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 especially uh, psilocybin mushrooms. Uh, look at look at Terrence McKenna. Look at all these other people. Uh, scientists who've, who've delved into this. Uh, there seems to be some form of creativity discovering mode that unlocks mm -hmm. when you're in a, um, a different state of mind and different state of being, a controlled state, controlled state of mind and being. Um, we don't know why that is. We don't understand it. Uh, one of the fascinating things, especially being an ex-pastor, is that they now can map 
when someone's thinking about God or thinking about their God or a belief system they truly believe in, as mm. opposed to when they're not thinking about it, there's a huge difference in brain, uh, brain patterns and brain. It's incredible. It's amazing. So what they've come up with is that the people who have these different changes, they just really believe what they believe because then they did a, they did a double blind thing with an atheist and they said, okay, as an atheist, start trying to believe in God, just think about God, think about whatever you believe in God. Mm -hmm. There was no change. That's pretty fascinating because yeah. he doesn't really believe it at all. Right. Well, he was just no, told to do something. Right. There's no deep belief. It's just f following instructions and they don't want to follow those instructions. Exactly. And so what they found is the people who truly believe what they believe, there was a huge change in whether it be meditation or whatever, they're lighting a candle, whatever they believe, um, a huge change in brainwave activity. And that's fascinating to me. So, and that's another thing, go into subjects that are fascinating to you. Delve into things that you and delve into things you don't know much about. Be open to learn about as much as you possibly can on this earth. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to? I mean, apparently it's for the benefit of our, our own understanding, our society to, 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 and, and benefit for uh, beneficial for our society to have people like that, to, that do that. So obviously it's here for a reason, you know, why not use it? I, I, I dig, I'm, I'm watching right now. I, I totally, uh, uh, recommend this series to everybody, but, uh, what is God by Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman does the narration for this on uh, the Discovery Channel. And every single episode is a different one. Why is there evil? Um, where did God come from? You know, miracles. Uh, it's just fascinating. And he goes all over the world and finding all these different people who believe what they believe and they tell their story. It's just really amazing. So, deep so delve into things like that. Yeah. So deep philosophical thought provoking questions, super deep yeah, really stretch your mind. And now here's what's interesting, though. You asked the question, but I and I have to say this. And I and if my mind changes later on down the road, I'm willing to make it have a change. I'm okay with it. But for right now, from what I've seen, I I'm I, I'm kind of an elitist in creative thinking. I'm I'm it's really weird, and and because I don't, not everybody's a plumber, okay. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's a lawyer, right? Not everybody's a teacher. Not everybody's a, okay. So we see that light discriminates naturally, right? It's a very, it's, it does that. It just does it, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I, and I think here's my problem with this new generation of um, people who are learning stuff off the internet and everything. We're, we're casting out a very big net for magic and we're bringing in the people who absolutely like don't care about magic. They don't care about the sacred side of it. So they don't care about revealing magic. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and we just casted too big of a net. I don't think magic was supposed to be this big of a net for this many people to know about it. Interesting. Uh, it's just, um, and I don't think everybody's creativity level or discovering level is the same. It's just not. It's just not. We have to understand that. Um, I'm not saying this in any form or fashion, like I'm better than anybody. I am the lowest of the low. Are you kidding me? If, if you would open up my head, think about what I see about myself on a daily basis. Trust me, this is all just fake. <laughs> but, um, but, but it's true. It's just true. So I can't, I can't say, okay, everybody go out there. And, but what I can say, why not go out there and try and see if that creative ju those creative juices see start what flowing? Happens, right? Most see what happens. Try. You have no clue where where it might bring you, right? Right. But also be realistic with goals. Be realistic with your own weaknesses, your own faults, and your own strengths. Be very realistic with that because you have to be honest with yourself, uh, especially in show show business. You just have to be, or you'll 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 never. Get and you'll just fall to the ground <laughs> completely. Uh, because once, and I said this before in the pre interview, once you're righteous as much as possible, and once you are righteous with yourself as much as possible, you're bulletproof, man. You're bulletproof. Nobody can touch you. Nobody. So, all those things, uh, and a good diet too, good food. A uh, good, good, good diet is really, really important. If you're going to, if you're going to just load yourself up with pizza and cheeseburgers and everything, well, you, of course, you're going to be lazy. You're not going to want to be able to do anything. And your brain's not going to work that way. Your brain's trying to just keep you alive at this time. You know what I mean? So 
really look at, you know, and do a lot of research, you know, on things. I think that's important too. Another thing is do things that aren't normally you like, uh, like, like, or, or, or do like, you know, if you don't like playing pool, find out why you don't like playing pool and then go play some pool and see if it changes you, you know, just because you don't like it when you were a kid doesn't mean you might not like this thing now. Exactly. I hated mayonnaise when I was a kid. I hated cauliflower when I was a kid. I hated them. I adore them now, not together, but just, I adore them now. Do you know what I mean? Like, I used to like not relish. I, I used to not, not, I used to not like relish. Right. And I used to not like it because I just thought it had things in it, more things than I thought were in it. Right. And then when I got older, I realized what it was. I'm like, I love relish. <laughs> so just try things, but also have realistic goals and realistic expectations for yourself. Um, there is a time to say, okay, this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately too many people picked up magic and, and have not, I uh, let that th come out of their mouth <laughs> and they should <laughs> unfortunately and 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 i i'll take it a step further just by saying maybe don't have any expectations at all mm. there you go that's because right when, once you set expectations of any kind mm. setting mm -hmm. a bar that you may or may not meet which may set yourself up for disappointment yeah that's a really good point would you say then, I think a better way to say it is while you're in the middle of the thing and you see, and you see where it's gone, I think, I think there's a point where you have to set an expectation when you're in the middle of the thing though, right? Because you'll just keep going and going and it's just never going to, you know what I mean? So you have to say, what, so while you're in it yes, and you're kind of, it's, you're kind of revolving around, it, it's revolving around you. You're seeing if it works for you. It's, it's seeing if it works for it. You know what I mean? Like, and I know I talk about this, like this, this force or like an entity, but it's like. What else do you say? It's just, it's weird. Either you look there, you can just look at people, either you have it or you don't have it. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. That is the one thing that I do adore about creativity and the creative concept and uh, the creative life and the creative, I, and, and that kind of thing in life is that it tells you very quickly if you're, if you're a match. Real fast. Yeah. It's so a yeah. swipe right or left very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, I'm so, trying to send pictures to creativity. It doesn't want to see you. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. That, that's a good yeah, one. You, yeah. That's a good one, right? That's good. You, Got you, a Tinder you, joke in there. Boom. Nice. So basically, just to, to summarize, be, mm. be open at first to mm -hmm. explore probably with no expectations once you're diving in. Absolutely. And then once you're in, and if you see something progressing, then maybe start setting some expectations. And I'd probably maybe say like, like go with goals, you know, set like goals that you know you'll probably be able to hit and then like gradually increase the level of difficulty. Level. Absolutely. Uh, and this is another good point. I get, I get asked so many, so many times, I want to create magic like you so I can be famous. I, you know, I get those emails all the time, seriously. I mean, they started when I was first did Silver Dream in 2005. 2006 they, they have not let up it still happens because another generation sees me who i ever am and then they see what i do whatever so I, I this is another really good point whatever your creative uh force and field you're in and whatever uh, uh you know situation art wise uh, that you're in whether you be a magician whether you be a, a poet whether you whether you're a writer whatever make sure i i i didn't get into magic to become a name. I didn't get into magic to make money. I didn't get into magic. Magic got into me. I had no choice. I was just, I was just a vessel. There I was and had just happened. But what I've learned is you can don't, don't ever have an attitude. I guess this goes along with the expectations, but don't ever have an attitude that you're doing this thing because other people are doing it. And therefore you want to do it and to fit in. Cause I'll tell you right now, this 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 creativity and discovering uh, the uh, things and stuff it, it's honest it's honest it's an honest thing it will it will talk to you very clearly and, and it does not like uh, manipulation of its use right. into the world it will it's very clear on that i don't know what it's it's a very strange uh, thing but i i've noticed that um so you got to be righteous about the whole thing you have to believe that this is something that you truly 
Like there's something about it you have to express in order to get it out. Like that's, that's, it's like your last breath. That's what you have to feel when you are in like that creative thing. Like, like I either do this or I just, or I, or I just leave this world. I, those are my two options. And when you're at that level, you know that you're in this, this space, right? So never do it for money. Never do it for fame. Never do it for clout. And don't do it just because other people are doing it. Um, and usually when other people look at you and go, oh, that's stupid or whatever, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Yeah. You, 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 you always, you know, listen for those signals too when people talk to you, wh whatever your thing is. And you go, hey, would you mind looking at this? Would you mind whatever? Um, and then get away from those other people immediately. Just get them <laughs> out of your life as fast as possible. They're, they're doing you a, a, an amazing service and you're doing them a great service too. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Well, that, that was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, we, we touched on a lot of things there. And I think, I think if people just de fully digest that, I think the rest of the interview will make either more sense or it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll be a little more like absorbed. I'm not saying that anything that was, no, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes no sense. This is the, this is the bread for the, this is the sopping up of the, of the biscuit, right? Sure. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So I hope everybody was paying attention. I hope the viewers and listeners were fully digesting that. If you can't at this moment, then <laughs> hey, play the video again, watch this episode. Yeah, again. there you go. Listen. Listen Absolutely. to it. The more the more views and, and replays we get, the better everyone is. That's right. Uh, Justin, That's right. That's Justin's right. got a lot of uh, really deep stuff he could touch on, and this conversation can go on and on and on. And Justin mm. is a massive wealth of knowledge, and mm. uh, I'm very grateful uh, that you've taken the time out of your day, your whirlwind of all the different voices talking in your head <laughs> the carnival yeah the carnival of souls over here <laughs> let me tell you something real you know yeah exactly let me tell you something real quick before we end uh yeah. a couple of days ago just to show you how my mind works a couple of days ago uh my brain had a thought i was sitting right here and my brain had a thought and i heard other like just thoughts in my head and i said out loud all right everybody calm down <laughs> as if there were 17 people in this room and I stopped and I started laughing my ass off because I think, I think the people need to understand too. There's a, there's an interesting line between madness and uh, genius. And in the, and what's interesting is when you don't know where that is, that's your sweet spot. That's the best place you can possibly be. <laughs> that's some of the best material comes out. It really does. It's crazy. Well, you've heard it. You've heard it first here. Or maybe you've heard this before. I know there were many things that probably you haven't heard before. Uh, it's just been uh, kind of mind blowing, mind opening, and I hope uh, Justin's inspired all of you guys to think a little differently of just about the approach and why you're doing what you're doing and why you're getting into it in the first place. Mm. So we've kind of come full circle, I think, with ex-pastor, philosopher, <laughs> bad boy, multi-faceted. Hey, illusion has started that. I'm not a bad boy. I promise you. I'm not. <laughs> Nice guy. No, he's, 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 a, he's a good guy. I'm not a nice a guy either. I'm just, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to bad boy. I like that better. <laughs> okay, nasty guy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Don't want to meet him. <laughs> but uh, he brought out a whole other side just for us. So I want to thank right. you, Justin. Thank you very much, Sean. It was an honor and a pleasure, dude. For taking the time out of your day to do yeah. this. And I want to thank all of my viewers and listeners for taking the time out of your day to watch and listen to this stuff. And I hope you guys got something out of it. And before we go, Justin, where can my viewers and listeners find out more about the legend that is Justin Miller? Oh, gosh, legend. That and the word <laughs> underrated are so overused today. And um, my favorite legend. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's, let's just add all the words. My favorite friend, love, legend. Yes. Uh, mentalsites.com e -M, uh, I'm sorry www.m-e-n-t-a-l-s-i-g-h-t-s.com mentalsites.com that's where I put out all my magic all my stuff um, I'm not doing anything with big companies hardly anymore I got something coming out with Murphy's coming soon uh, but that's pretty much it um, I, I do everything myself I, I, I do create discover everything myself I if there's gimmicks involved I make those it's it's a whole one it's so it's delicate deceptions is the company name but mental sites I wanted and that's another thing I wanted my company name to be different than 
the brand, you know what I mean? Like having and seeing, just kind of playing with that. It's been pretty, pretty fascinating, actually. Uh, but yeah, and I, and I do, uh, I do very limited releases. So you can get on my a mailing list, uh, uh, a newsletter uh, from my site. It'll pop up and then you can be a part of when I put things out. Okay, so if any of that piques your interest, if, if, if there are any magicians or any people that are listening that are serious about learning magic and, and uh, supporting uh, some of the, the creative endeavors that Justin does, feel free to check out mentalsites.com. And, and also, Sean, the people, who, real quick, the people who are not magicians, don't go there, but go on YouTube and just look me up, Justin Miller Magic. There's a wealth of videos if I died today, nobody will ever not know who Justin Miller was. It's uh, I'm very fortunate when it comes to that. So yeah, and, th and those are like old trailers and stuff they can watch. So there's no uh, you know exposure or anything. They can just enjoy that. Right. right. Or my Magic Castle video, my Magic Castle lecture or my uh, show is online. You can look that up, Justin Miller Magic Castle. Yeah. So if you guys just want to have fun and just yeah. see what kind of performer Justin is and be amazed, watch. Type in YouTube, Justin Miller Magic Castle. And, and and do a drinking game where you can just see how many times I change uh, different uh, uh, personas and characters over the years. <laughs> and you will be very tipsy by the end of that game. There you uh, are. As you will find out if you research Justin and his work. So, <laughs> Justin, this has been an absolute blast. Uh, bringing back Pleasure. memories and diving into some super deep stuff. And I want to yeah. thank you guys for watching and listening to the another episode of the making magic podcast and we'll see you guys in the next episode